guys so welcome back to my new natural hamster cage series this is going to be part two of the series so if you haven't seen part one yet I will link it down in the description but if you have seen part one then you know that I am currently in the process of setting up a brand new cage for my dwarf hamster Gerg so just to recap part one really quick in part one my parents and I took a quick trip to Ikea and we bought the cage and the sand you see behind me and we put it all together. Like I said, this is going to be the new home for my dwarf hamster, Gerg. I'm one of the only people in the hamster community that hasn't tried a Detolf cage and I really wanted to try it because I think it would make a great cage for a dwarf and usually I have Syrians. So this series is just all about me setting up that cage. For part two, I thought it'd be fun to do a big haul. I bought so much new stuff specifically for this cage because I am setting it up more natural than I ever have before. So I had to go out and buy a ton of stuff so I thought you guys would enjoy seeing a natural hamster haul. Before I get into the haul, once again I want to give a huge thanks to Carefresh. Carefresh is sponsoring this entire series and making it all possible. So if you haven't already, make sure you click the link down in my description and go sign up for Club Carefresh if you want to get exclusive coupons sent right to your email. Also there will be another link down in the description to Carefresh Gives Back. That is Carefresh's new program where every two months they pick a small animal shelter that you guys can vote for and they send them free bedding and coupons to help their animals. So if you know a great small animal shelter that you want to nominate for that, make sure you click that link down in the description. But thank you so much Carefresh for sponsoring this series. Now let's get on to the haul. So I do have quite a bit of stuff here to show you. Like I said, I'm going for more of a German inspired natural cage theme this time. I've never done that in the past. Usually I do have a lot of plastic and everything in my cage, which I don't personally think is bad. I don't know if I'll keep it natural forever, but I have been really interested in more of the natural style cages lately. So I thought it was time to try it out. I'm sure once I start setting up this cage, which will be in part three of this series that I'll need to get some more items so this probably isn't everything that you're going to be seeing in the cage along with some of the stuff I already own but this is going to be a large portion of what's going to be going into the cage. So sticking with the Carefresh theme the first thing I have is this giant bag of Carefresh bedding. Even though I am going for more of a natural theme I did want to use some paper bedding because I've noticed that if I just give Gerg Aspen he doesn't like to burrow much and he really prefers paper bedding to burrow in and I'm also not a huge fan of just the natural paper bedding so I went ahead and got white so it's nothing colorful just the plain white one so this will be the majority of his cage I am going to be using a lot of different substrates and bedding but this is going to be a large part of his enclosure. The next bedding item I have is some orchard grass. This is actually by the brand Vitacraft. I actually sell this in my pet shop. My pet shop is always linked down in the description in case you're wondering. I've actually never tried hay with my hamsters. I do use it all the time for my gerbils and it really helps them keep their tunnels. So I thought it would be a great addition to a more natural cage. So this is just some orchard grass that I'm going to be incorporating into the bedding. Next I have another type of bedding. Like I said, I really want to incorporate a lot of different beddings into this so Gerg has a nice variety to choose from. I just picked up a bag of Aspen shavings. I got these on Amazon. It is the Living World brand. So this is a pretty small bag of Aspen just because I don't want to use it in a large portion of the cage. So I picked up some Aspen. And the last type of substrate I have to show you in this video is just some sand. Gerg absolutely loves using his sand bath. So in this cage, since it is a lot larger than what he's currently in, I want to try to give him a large bathing section. I'm hoping that maybe around a quarter or so of the tank will be filled with sand. This is just Repti sand. I get it in the reptile section. Plain reptile sand is good to use. You don't want to use calcium sand or anything that's colored. But this is just the natural reptile sand. You can also use play sand. Play sand is a lot cheaper. But I've just found that reptile sand is my favorite. A lot of play sand around me when I buy it like at Home Depot has larger granules in it. And generally you have to sift it to get it a nice consistency. And then a lot of sand that are made for small animals are a little bit too dusty. So I've just found that even though reptile sand is kind of pricey, it is my favorite consistency. So I went ahead and picked up a 10 pound bag of reptile sand. I am also planning on incorporating some type of dirt or soil into his tank. I don't have any here today because I already have some on hand that I think I'm going to use, but I still need to do a little bit more research into that. So there's no soil here today, but hopefully there will be some next week when we set up his enclosure. The next two items I have to show you are the items I'm most excited to try just because they're not items you find here in the U.S. I actually ordered these two items on Amazon. I did order them from the U.S. Amazon site, but they were partnered with the U.K. Amazon site and they ended up shipping out from Poland. So it was pretty expensive. I'm pretty sure shipping these two items cost 
as much or a little bit more than the items did themselves. But since I'm trying to go natural, I really wanted some items that aren't that easy to find in the US. And I'm sure I could have DIY'd them myself if I had the time, patience, and talent. So I thought I would just go ahead and buy them. The first thing I got is a wooden wheel. I have to admit, wooden wheels scare me a bit just because they do seem pretty hard to clean. This one actually has a cork layer inside. When I was doing my research, I noticed that a lot of the wooden wheels that have the little kind of like foot grips inside actually aren't the safest because the way they're spread out, some hamsters can catch their feet on them. So this cork one was recommended, but it does seem a little unsanitary because there's really no good way to clean cork. But the good thing is, fingers crossed, so far Gerg has been one of my only hamsters that doesn't urinate on his wheel. So I'm hoping that will continue to be true and this won't be too nasty. But I really wanted to try out a wood wheel because you see them in a lot of natural cages and I've never seen them here in the US. So I did order it online. I know when I ordered this one, it was the last one in stock, but I will put a link to Amazon down in the description because I know I'm going to get a ton of questions about where exactly I got this. It definitely isn't cheap to get it here, but I will put a link down in the description in case you're interested. And the next item is the other item that I ordered from Amazon, which was partnered with Amazon UK, which shipped from Poland. It is a hide. So this is actually a multi-chamber hide. I've been hearing about these a ton lately in my research. A lot of people prefer the multi-chamber hides because they more closely mimic what a hamster would use in the wild. So I thought I would try one out. This is the only one I could find that would ship to the US. Once again, I could have made this myself if I had the time, patience, and talent, but I don't. So I went ahead and spent too much money to send it here instead. But this is the brand. Once again, like the wheel, I will put it down in the description because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about it. But this is just a pretty large hide. It has a hole in the front and there's also a hole on the top and this lid actually just pulls right off. And then as you can see, there are multiple different chambers in here. So your hamster can sleep in one, store their food in another. So I really just wanted to try this out to see if I can tell if Gerb prefers it or what he thinks. So this is going to be one of the major things in Gerg's new cage. Next, I have a couple pieces of wood. Both of these are ones that I just pulled from my pet shop inventory. So you can find these on picklespetshop.com. Once again, my pet shop is linked in the description, but I got a cork round and then a piece of grapevine. So these are just some natural toys, hides, chews. They're really multi-purpose and I thought they would look great in a natural cage. So maybe I'll bury this one halfway in the substrate or something and give him a little entrance to a tunnel and then this is just a cool piece of grapevine for him to climb on. Just two pieces of natural wood. Next are the bendy bridges. I might have went a little bit overboard buying bendy bridges because I do have a lot of ideas of how I want to incorporate them into the cage but I'm not exactly sure yet so instead of being cautious I just went ahead and bought all of them. So first off I bought a couple bendy bridges off of Amazon. The first ones I got came in this two pack. I didn't really read the measurements before I got them so they are a little bit small than I thought, but I do still have some good ideas on how I'm going to be able to use them. So I have two small bendy bridges. Next, another bendy bridge I bought from Amazon is this really long one. So this is actually folded in half right now. It does have hooks on the end, which I might take out. I don't know if I'm gonna need the hooks, but this is just a really long bridge. It's almost 22 inches long. It is pretty skinny, but once again, I was buying it just for the length because I thought it was pretty cool. So here is a really long bendy bridge. And then I wasn't sure if those were gonna be enough since the ones were a little bit smaller than I was expecting. So of course I went to PetSmart and I got a bendy bridge and I got another bendy bridge. And just to be safe, I got a third bendy bridge. So like I said, I'm not exactly sure what I'm using all of these for yet, but I'm sure I will need them. Even in my normal cages where I'm not going for an all natural look, I always use a lot of these. So it's always good to have some extras on hand, even if I don't use them all right away, but we'll see next week when I set up the cage. But for now, I definitely think I have enough bendy bridges. And last, I just have three type of chews or toys, decor, whatever you want to call it. The first thing is from PetSmart. These are just some pine cones. It's just three pine cones in a bag. Kind of silly to pay. I don't know how many dollars this was for three pine cones when you can just go outside and get them for free. But I just wanted to make sure they were completely free of any pesticides or pests. So I went ahead and bought these. Gerg is actually one of the biggest chewers I've ever had. So I definitely think he will like these and they'll go with my natural theme. And the last two items I got, I also got off Amazon. These are just some different types of sprays to put around the tank. So first I have a small bag of these wheat sprays, which I'm sure all of you have seen before. I don't know if I would order these on Amazon again though. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but when they came, a lot of them look like they're like falling apart. 
So I don't know if that's Amazon's fault or what. I know I've bought them in store before and they definitely didn't look like that. So I probably won't be buying these online again. Hopefully there's enough in here that I can actually use. And then I did buy another thing of sprays and this is a giant bag. I bought this huge bag of oat spray. Unfortunately, these are kind of like the wheat spray where it looks like a lot of them actually fell off. Even if they did, I'll still be able to sprinkle them around the cage and it will be fine. It's just really not what I was expecting. So it should work out, hopefully. I just don't think I'll be buying them from Amazon again. So that is everything I have to show you in this natural haul. Like I said at the beginning, I'm sure once I start setting up his cage, I'll need more items and I'll change things around. But for the most part, I think that is the bulk of what's gonna be going in his new natural cage. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part three coming up next week. In part three, I'm actually going to be setting up his enclosure and getting it all ready for him. Once again, thank you to Carefresh for sponsoring this series. Make sure you check out the links in the description and sign up for Club Carefresh and nominate a shelter for Carefresh Gives Back. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. If you are, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time.